Silence is the canvas of thought. Whether it's social media, family, friends, or you might be at work and you might be getting Slack messages, Telegram messages, email pings, whatever it is, there's so much noise around us that finding times to pause is hard to do. Or is it? The reason why you don't pause is because it's uncomfortable. I did a keynote for a HR conference, 100 plus leaders in the room. And we ended up having a half an hour session, which is part Q&A, but part live coaching. I wanted to share some of the goals that the organization was trying to achieve for the three different functions that were in that room. Great goals. They finally had some clarity. Just because you have clarity doesn't mean that all the different human behavior traits that have brought upon so many excuses in the past have all gone away. What are you avoiding by staying busy? What is it that makes silence so uncomfortable for you that you feel the need to want to fill it with something? Ask yourself that. Silence is the canvas of thought. This is a guide that we use a lot in my organization, Mindset Shift when we talk to clients to remind them that in the quiet, our thoughts find their true form. And it conveys the idea that silence provides a very foundational and open space to which we find our thoughts, our ideas, our creativity, to what all those different elements can truly and freely unfold. It's very much like a blank canvas which offers an artist a limited amount of potential expression. And in that silence, they can, they can have fun with it. The mind can just freely flow where you can gain clarity to explore, to imagine, and ultimately to create without any ex external noise. Very much like the art you can see behind me. That artist was able to just lock in, take his time, to truly just pour out and create such beauty. In leadership or personal growth context, it highlights the importance of pausing and finding those quiet moments to allow deeper reflection, insights, innovative thinking. Because you see, pausing isn't just stopping. It's an active engagement. Yeah, I said that right. In the pause, in what feels like you're doing absolutely nothing, you're actually engaged in something. You're engaged, engaged with what's unspoken. And that allows people like you to be able to gain clarity in chaos. And in today's episode of Everyday Leadership, I want to talk about the power of the pause and how you can transform that silence into strength. See, we live in a world <laughs> that does not stop talking. Whether it's social media, whether it's family, friends, or you might be at work and you might be getting Slack messages, Telegram messages, email pings, whatever it is, there's so much noise around us that Finding times to pause is hard to do. And yet, this is one of the most powerful tools that's in your arsenal. And the reason why you don't use that tool, and the reason why you can easily use some of the things I said, I don't have time, the world is busy, I've got so many different things to do. The reality is, all of that is just an excuse. The reason why you don't pause is because it's uncomfortable. But yet that's where your real and true power lies. In a world where it never stops talking, embracing silence can be seen as radical, can be seen as revolutionary. Yet we've all gone through an experience a number of years ago during the pandemic where we were forced to just stop and pause and think and there were so many great thoughts that were unleashed in that period of time 
Rumi has this quote that says, the world is full of noise. Listen to the silence. And that mindset shift, we're an organization that we're reimagining what leadership is by unlearning, unlocking, and unleashing. What we mean by that is we are doing away with outdated models. We are unlocking new potentials in individuals, in teams, in cultures, and in organizations, and ultimately in the world. We do that by unleashing authentic leadership capabilities that I believe every single one of us is born with. But we do not ever unleash those capabilities. We don't fully tap into our purpose and turn it. So we don't fully tap into our potential and turn it into purpose because we operate in a world that we use the noise to cloud our judgment. And I just want to slow you down for a minute because pausing allows you just to take a break from the constant noise of your lives. It's a space where clarity, creativity, creativity and connection occurs. Clarity, creativity, and connection occurs. Let me share a story with you. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, I did a keynote for a HR conference, 100 plus leaders in the room. And I talked about running theme of trust. And after about 30 minutes of talking and sharing, giving examples, I stopped and I turned to the room and I started to ask them questions. They were not ready for this at all. And we ended up having a half an hour session, which is part Q&A, but part live coaching, in you know, honesty, where I was just asking them probing questions. And the reason why I did that was I wanted to yeah, share some of the goals that the organization was trying to achieve for the four different, three different functions that were in that room. Great goals. They finally had some clarity. Absolutely amazing. But just because you have clarity doesn't mean that you're going to take action. Just because you have clarity doesn't mean that all the different human behavior traits that have brought upon so many excuses in the past have all gone away. And that's what I wanted to bring up. What are the things, what are the barriers, what are the mindsets that can get in the way of you actually achieving those goals and making them a reality? Because that's what I want you to do. Ultimately, I want you to take action. So when I started to ask them those questions, crickets, silence. And in my head, you're on stage, a hundred people looking back at you, and I'm thinking, is everyone going to talk? <laughs> is everyone going to say anything? It was awkward. It was uncomfortable. You could hear a pin drop in that environment but we sat in it and then just like that someone spoke and someone else spoke and someone else spoke and they began to share the unblockers that they had well, not actually the blockers the blockers that they had and we managed to unblock it live in real time i could feel the fear in the room not just because of my questions that I just added to it fair because of what they're about to step into and I recognize how uncomfortable it could be so I stepped into that fear with them I held it from the stage which then created that environment for them to begin to unlock all those different elements enabling them to then unleash the full potentials that they have in the pause we confront our true challenges and that's exactly what happened in that room by asking a question, it allowed that silence just to linger. And generally speaking, in silence, someone will always break because it gets to that point where it's way too much. And I'm an exec coach. I, I can wait. I can sit in that uncomfortableness. I can learn to just hold it. And that's what I did. But I want to say, even though I'm laughing about it right now, that wasn't always the case for me. I still always go back to when I was 15 and up until that point, I had lived a life 
first thing you think what you know about i'd lived a life that was not in congruence with who i was it wasn't in congruence with the values that i had that i've been brought up in it wasn't in congruence with my faith and on the outside it was a very good life i had good friends around me um I had a couple of options when it comes to girls. Things were going all right. But inside they went up. And inside I was I was broken. And inside I was damaged. And inside I was hurting. And in the pause, in the silence, in a time alone from the world around me, from the noise around me, I heard God speak and I heard God challenge me and I was convicted and I stepped into the uncomfortableness and in doing that, a reemergence of shockware was, was formed, was birthed and almost what, 25 years later, that was very transformational for me. That was the first true real mindset shift that I made that helped me to, to be anchored in who I was and not be shaken by the different things happening around me. That all happened in the pause, taking time away from everything. In fact, I had to turn off my, I, I loved music. Like my friends would tell you, like I, I still have collections from way back in the day, mixtapes, CDs. I'll go down to Wood Green. My man um, knew me by name, and he had the latest um, like R and B and soul and hip hop CDs. I used to spend ridiculous amount of money on CDs those days. They were ten pounds, ten pounds or fourteen pounds, like forty nine pounds for CDs. But he used to hook me up because I came that frequently. I love music, and I had to just turn that down and really hear God's voice. See, it's very tempting to fill that silence with noise. But when we do that, we rob ourselves the opportunity to learn, to grow, to connect on a deeper level. One of the questions I get a lot when um, I'm working with leaders, doing keynotes, I've had it in that conference. How do I get ideas from my people? How do I get them to speak and share? You say, stop talking. When you start a meeting, when you're chairing a meeting, don't be the first voice that goes. Don't be the first, first voice that leads with an idea. Because nine times out of ten, people will listen to your idea and pick it back on the back of it. Instead, start that meeting and say, I'm not going to say anything. I want to hear what ideas you've got about what we're trying to execute on. You'd be surprised how much creativity and innovative ideas come out when you just hush. Rather than having that one voice, now you've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, hopefully diverse voices, which you can then help shape into something real intangible. And don't like, what? Is it that simple? Is it that easy? Well, yes and no. Yes, it's that easy for you to hush and listen. It is not so easy for your team to know what to do because they're not used to it. So you have to socialize that and do that a number of times for them. But also, actually, for you, it will be hard, especially if you're someone who feels, well, part of me being a leader, I me mean, having the titles, I need, to, I need to fill this room with my voice. No. Learning to just sit in silence, it is hard for anyone to do. But that's the learning and the journey that you both go through. When you talk about really birthing environments where people can talk, they can share, they can bring what they have. That's a very simple but effective strategy to go about it. And it starts with you being silent. Satya um, Nadelli, who is the CEO of Microsoft, of Microsoft, can exemplify the power of the pause. When he took the helm of Microsoft, he introduced a culture where they listened, they were empathetic, 
um, they paused, often paused during meetings just to encourage deep reflection and understanding. And he married that with appreciative inquiry, which is like a change management approach, which focuses on identifying what's working well in a particular situation and analyzing it and then doing more of it, um, or even leaning back into what's not working. Like very similar to start, stop, continue. Um, but it's framed slightly differently. But you lean more into utilizing questions, engaging in dialogue, just to uncover strengths and successes and values and experiences. And it is all about using pause, using the space to pull stuff out of people before you kind of move forward. That approach transformed Microsoft. It fostered innovation, fostered collaboration, reinvigorated their corporate ethos. That's the power of the pause. So how can you make the power of the pause practical in our daily lives? Here are some questions that you can begin to think about. What am I avoiding by staying busy? Yes, said it. What are you avoiding by staying busy? There's so much I can unpack on that one, but I, I need to do a whole different podcast on business. And I don't have time. The number one thing I hear from people that I work with, I don't have time. Whether it's CEOs, whether it's, regardless of what your, your position is, I don't have time. That's absolutely rubbish. So I want you to think and ask yourself, what am I avoiding by staying busy? When's the last time you sat in silence without distractions. No music, no background noise, no nothing. Just sat in silence. What was the last time you did that? What is it that makes silence so uncomfortable for you that you feel the need to want to fear with something? Ask yourself that. What is it about silence? What is it that comes up for me? Where's it your mind goes? Is it things that are good for you or not so good for you? Is it things that are comfortable or not so comfortable? Is it things that you've avoided? Where does your mind go? And how can you then begin to prioritize what truly matters? Hmm. What am I avoiding by staying busy? When's the last time you sat in silence without obstructions what is it about silence that's uncomfortable to you what can you begin to prioritize when you sit in that silence what comes up for you i shared so many times how so many different life-changing moments have happened for me in the silence but the silence wasn't me just sat down actually for me that silence was going for a run and in that i will have conversations with god i'll have conversations with myself and so many comfort leaps comfort zone leaps that i've taken that were just ridiculous all came in the silence in the pause in the reflection in the early mornings of the day we often avoid the pause because it forces us to come to confront ourselves and our vices work social media other distractions that's easy we can, we can step into those as escape pods all day, every day. But sit with your thoughts. And sit with your feelings. Woof! That's a whole different ball, ball game. But yeah, that's where the path to growth and transformation sits. The pause allows you to sift through the noise. And find your authentic voice. Your authentic self. Align your actions with your deepest values. Ensure your behavior is on point. That's what the pause does. Good um, acronym. Is that the right word to use? Around pause. P. Perceive. Notice the current situation with fresh eyes. A. Acknowledge. Recognize the different emotions, thoughts, contributions of... Things that are coming up, either for you if you're doing this personally or doing this for your team. So everyone involved. That's acknowledging you recognizing those thoughts. Understand them. 
understand the underlying factors and perspectives that are showing up. Again, if you're doing this with a team, what's happening in that environment or what's happening for you? This can be when you're, when you're even presented with data. What's behind the data? Synthesize. You now bring together different viewpoints to help you have a better understanding. I would say, for example, if you're doing this for yourself, have a series of questions that you can ask yourself, but you can also send out to friends and families and other people who might know you well, who can give you another 360 view of certain areas that you might not be able to see. In your teams, you do exactly the same thing. You have 360 assessments, you have conversations, you have feedback loops they can build in just to get different viewpoints. But it's also a good way to kind of check, do I have bias? And what voices are missing from this conversation, especially when you're doing it in a company context? And last but not least, you start to evaluate. You can see that all those different things you've done previously from the understanding to the synthesization and you now start to consider what the different implications and what are the potential outcomes and then what are the actions you need to take to explore new possibilities that's pausing perceive acknowledge understand synthesize evaluate perceive acknowledge understand synthesize evaluate that is what it means to pause how to pause is not easy. It is a challenge. But in the silence, that's where we find our strength. That's where we face our fears. That's where we grow. That's what that real growth mindset looks like. For yourself, for your team, for your organization. It all happens when we sit in the silence and sit in uncomfortability. I want to end today's podcast with a quote from one of my favorite books by Viktor Frankl, um, Man's Search for Meaning. And he says, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. What response are you going to take? back of listening to this podcast this is everyday leadership if you haven't subscribed please do so tell a friend to tell a friend we'll see you next week